All right, hi, this is Chris. Welcome everybody, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're coming along and painting with us on our watercolor journey here. Um, we're actually doing some plein air painting today. You're gonna see some real fun uh, plein air painting. I'm just out in my backyard here in New Jersey in the United States, having a good time. It's a beautiful day, 70 degrees out, hot, sunny. Um, just a beautiful day to be outdoors, painting a little bit. Um, uh, wind is low, so there's no real problem with stuff blowing around. And uh, the only problem we had was our camera was uh, giving us a little bit of an issue, our video camera uh, shutting off when uh, it was uh, in the sunlight. So I tried to set up an umbrella. We had a little bit of issues. So you'll see some outdoor footage here when we're painting outdoors. But so this is going to be a mix of outdoor. And then we bring this painting back in the studio and we finish it. So this is the finished painting. You'll see here it's really just a nice... Um, uh, you know, still life painting of a, of a jar with some flowers in it. Um, and then a, a nice uh, shorebird, a little shorebird I, ha I have uh, at the house here. Um, wooden um, uh, bird that I have. Um, I got that on Amazon online. And um, so we have that. We put that in the painting for a little bit of interest and in having a couple, um, couple of items that we were working with here, some subject matter. And um, so this is the finished painting. And at this point, you can definitely, I guess, do, um, I guess, however you like to, uh, it's good to work from this. So if you can save this to your um, laptop or your iPhone or your iPad or if you have a Samsung phone or a, um, a home computer, if you can save this picture and then work from this, that's going to be great. So maybe you can work uh, from this picture it's, itself as you're doing the um working through this uh, video and you can watch the video at the same time so you can watch the video at the same time as you're looking at this finished painting and this way you can kind of see the finished product and what you're uh, looking to sort of achieve on your painting on your your um, paper and how much paint you're using and water and everything and your subject matter and then uh, you'll have much mm, much more success if you're trying to work with your paintings using a finished painting as your subject matter um, so uh, that'll be great and okay so now we're gonna get started we'll start uh, right at the beginning when we're outdoors doing some pencil drawing and uh, starting our painting okay we'll just be back in a second Okay, here we are, we're doing some plein air painting outdoors in the backyard here in New Jersey, beautiful USA. I have a still life set up across from me. You can see that just at the right of the picture frame. Uh, we have some fresh flowers I just picked from around the yard. Um, it's really hot out today, it's probably about 75, so some of the flowers are a little bit, uh, they're wilting a little bit, but there's no problem. I'm just putting them there for the um, uh, the general idea of what I want to do, I want to do a simple vase, flowers. Um, there's some nice, beautiful green uh, leafy uh, forms in that uh, vase. I have a little shorebird that's along the uh, side of the vase that I have. It's a little uh, small um, wooden uh, painted uh, shorebird. So we're going to just do the two two bits of subject matter. Um, I put a stack tray out with a drop, uh, um, with a uh, tablecloth on top with some striped pattern, which kind of looks good. There's a little bit of color in it. You can see, you might be able to see that. The, uh, there's some yellow and red striping on the, uh, you might not be able to see that in the picture frame, but we'll, we'll zoom in uh, in a few uh, minutes uh, to look at the table close up and the vase and the flowers and the shorebird. But for right now, we're going to get started. We'll do the drawing. I'm just going to do the drawing here on the paper. I have the paper set up on an easel with some foam board and then my water block arches rough paper. So I have some arches rough paper here. And uh, I have a, just a regular, um, very simple Velbon tripod 
for my stand that I uh, attached to my foam board and then I taped my foam board, uh, taped my watercolor block to the foam board. So maybe in future videos I'll cover, I'll cover the actual uh, setup I have with the um, tripod and my foam board and, and so forth. But for right now, we could work in our lap, it would be just the same. If we're working in our lap, we would just have maybe a, a sketchbook in our lap and then we just set up something on a stack tray outside some nice beautiful fresh air here we have the birds chirping the fresh air the sunlight we're feeling good we're going to paint some plain air here and we're doing some still life so we'll, we'll get started so i'm just going to basically start with my vase i'm going to go right in the center of my painting so i'll start my vase here and it tapers out slightly and then it goes in like this and then it tapers up like that and then now I'll get into some flower shapes and some leafy forms and there's the some yellow flowers here I'm just trying to capture the overall idea of the flower shapes. And I'll come back down here and do the rest of the vase. And I'm contour drawing. Shadow goes back here. And then I have a stripe here. And there's the table. So I'm working on a stack tray. So this is about the stack tray underneath the tablecloth. So I'll just make a line to let myself know that's where that is. And we might finish this in the studio actually. So I might just start this, get some ideas out on the paper. And then maybe we'll go back in the studio and we'll finish it up. But we, we, I wanted to start out here. It's really enjoyable out today. Beautiful sunny day, 70 degrees. And then we have uh, some more lead, uh, flower shapes here. Here, the same thing, more flower shapes. And some more flower shapes going out of the frame here. So this is our tape, our frame of the picture. And some more leaf forms. And we have the back of the table about here. And and I'll do some striping table on the uh, tablecloth. These are the fine lines here, the fine stripes on the tablecloth. So I'll put some details on those to let me know those are the fine lines. I don't want to make those too thick. And then these are the thicker lines here with the color. 
and that's pretty good. What we'll do is we'll start out with a larger paper and then later when we're finished with this we can crop it down and frame it in a smaller format so we give ourselves extra paper to work with. Better to start with a larger sheet of paper than to try to just work within one bit so you can always crop this down and trim the edges off as you need for your if you want to frame it so we're gonna we have some it's a clear glass boss all right we're gonna get some we're gonna get some uh, paint on And I'm going to use my standard palette that I use. And that's my standard colors you'll see. So I'm using my small travel palette. And I'll use a number six, a number six Da Vinci Maestro, Sable round brush and I'll start with that in number six we'll get some interesting uh, colors out now we'll do some greens so some cerulean blue and greens here sunlight's coming straight down like this And so I'm getting some greens on there. purple and alizarin crimson. French ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, purple. Some shadowing here. And I'll get some more lizard and crimson up here, lighter. And some more over here. Purple.
and a little bit of yellow ochre and cerulean blue. Then we're going to go with some yellow, cadmium yellow. Straight out of the tube color. So I'm going right into my straight out of the tube cadmium yellow. There's interesting shadows in here in these leaf forms, so I'm leaving some some orange, cadmium orange now mixed in with that for some of the There's also some blue mix in there. Burnt umber. So some shadows within the yellow. Cadmium lemon yellow. Straight out of the tube, cadmium yellow. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna take a break here. We will clean up our palette. We have a lot of paint on our palette right now. So we're gonna wanna clean up all our palette, get all that paint off with some paper, paper towel and then we're going to come back in and we'll continue working on the flowers up here and then once we're done with that we'll start working down into the vase and the tablecloth but we're doing pretty good already we got great beautiful color out of here yellow bright yellow cadmium yellow cadmium lemon yellow alizarin crimson and uh, purple so we're doing really well Let's take a break. We'll clean up our palette. We'll take a break. Clean up the palette. And we'll continue on. Okay, so this is the uh, setup that we had, we are working from. My camera shut off a few times, my video camera, so we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but that's not, not too bad, actually. It, this is what we get when we try to capture the outdoors and being outside painting and so forth. So um, we're just out here. This is the uh, vase and flowers and shorebird. Um, I had to use sticks to hold up the flowers. They were wilting because it was pretty hot, about 75 degrees out. So sometimes you might have to do that. Improvise a little bit if you're painting outdoors and you're trying to set something up. Um, so I just used uh, sticks with some uh, zip ties. Zip tied the flowers to the sticks so that they would stay up for us when we were painting and drawing uh, as we started. So let's go back in. We'll. Uh, finish up in the studio, finish the painting, and uh, we'll have some fun and enjoy. And we'll see you just in a second, and we'll go back to the studio. Okay, this video is definitely a labor of love. We actually were painting outdoors for a while today. Um, I decided to move my... Uh, video camera and all my gear back into the studio. Uh, it took a lot of time to actually move a lot of my stuff outdoors into the backyard of my, my home and do some videos out there. Um, but I like to do that and I'm actually looking forward to, to, you know, to doing that even more often now and taking my gear and going out on the road, going to different places around the uh, area that I live, maybe even different states. Um, so this is a work in progress, but I always like to try to venture out and do new things and so 
we just uh, moved back in to the studio right now. So I placed my uh, watercolor painting back onto my working board uh, in my studio. My paints, we got everything going back again here in the studio. So we're going to finish up this uh, painting. And uh, it's really just so much fun though, painting outdoors. That's why I try to do it, especially today it was beautiful. The only problem is my camera, my video camera overheats in the, in the hot weather. So that's a flaw that the camera has. Um, it overheats uh, when the video uh, is running on it. If it's outdoors and probably above about 70 degrees out, it actually shuts down after a couple minutes of videoing. So uh, in the studio, my camera and my video camera is fine. It's just outdoors in the heat that it uh, struggles a little bit and shuts down. So let's get back into it here. So we're going to continue. I'm going to take some cerulean blue, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of lizard and crimson. I'll try to put a little shadow under there. And I'm just remembering being outside now and just sort of trying to recall the... So I rinse off my brush and dry it off a little bit on my apron or I can use as a paper towel or a tissue. And I just soften that edge a little bit there. There's a little bit of a shadow under here on the uh, vase where the flowers are. It's casting a shadow. Light's coming from the front down this way, high up in the sky. So the sun was directly overhead but behind us. So that's why we're getting this effect of um, shadowing on the glass a little bit here, this glass vase and back here. And uh, let's continue. Um, let's work on the uh, shorebird. So that's uh, raw umber. Burnt umber, a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue to get a little darker. So we can take that brown and make it a little darker with a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue. And uh, what else will we need for this? So that's pretty good. And then maybe a little blue just for some cool wash. And The shorebird is dark on top. And here I try to get that feeling of darker. The shorebird is actually dark brown on the top and I'd like to create that feeling of light on the back of the shorebird so I use a little darker with this added the French ultramarine blue to the brown so that we can have that little bit of dark uh, wash on top and then Perfect. Then the lighter wash with a little blue for underneath. And you can see I'm just really taking my time. I have my hand resting on the paper. So I'm nice and stable. I've got my lighter wash, which was French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of cerulean blue for the underside of the the shorebird's belly and we'll go right underneath like so and we can also do a little bit of uh, splashing Just to have a little variation there. And 
French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Then I dry off my brush just a little bit so I don't have too much paint. And we'll make the the beak of the bird. We'll let this dry before we do the eye. So we'll leave that last. Usually when I do my shore birds, I have about three or four different uh, birds that I have, uh, wooden birds. Um, I always, whenever I'm doing a bird, I always let the eye go till the very end of the painting. And this way I know it's always usually 100% dry. If I was to try to put the eye in there now, it would be, it would just blossom out and the paint would just run everywhere because it's still damp. We just did that wash on the underside of the bird. So we'll just remember that. It's always good just to leave some of those finer details to last. I'm going to make this darker here underneath for the shadow and then we'll create a shadow on this side Maybe a tiny bit of wash here. A little bit of dark here. Perfect. Now let's uh, we're going to work some green color, French ultramarine blue. I'm going to go with straight paint. French ultramarine blue, sap green, and a little bit of burnt sienna. I dry off my brush a little. And we're just going to do this. And I'm just doing those very fine lines on the tablecloth. Here and there. And I try to change the color a little bit. Green, some blue. Then we're going to use some and what I do is I go straight into the paint, no, no water, and I just drag the paint across. Then I pick up some blue so we can darken this a little. That gives it a shadow feel. And I'll make this one here. Just mix in, you know, some uh, of my brown and blue mix there, just to darken that up there. So I'm just doing the stripes, and that's always a fun thing when you do stripes or things like that when you're working on um, 
sort of like not the main subject matter but it's fun to when you just have like supporting parts of the painting where you know the tablecloth is not the main subject of the painting at all subject matter you know the flowers and the bird really are the main subject matter but you can still have fun with the the um, the other uh, parts of the painting like this part the uh, tablecloth and we're just gonna I'll go with some uh, And I try to make things look a little more interesting. So our tablecloth is looking good. We have um, a little more uh, detail there. And we pretend we can see through the glass. And we have a little more detail there. <clears throat> All right, so we're doing really well here. Let's take a quick break. Um, you know, working too much more, we're, I'm going to start to get fatigued and maybe you know, sort of go off my game plan. So my game plan is I finished the stripes on the tablecloth. I did the shorebird. Looks good. Let me get, take a break and then we'll finish up. We'll do some background color here, or especially along this back of the table. We'll do some uh, wash there along the back of the table to give that some, this will become brighter and look more like brightly lit if we put some background color along the back of this table cloth here. So we'll do that, and uh, that should be it. That should be plenty, maybe a couple more details in the flowers here we can finish up with uh, with our needlepoint brush. But uh, other than that, we're looking pretty good. We want to keep this loose, fun, free. We were outside painting outdoors. We would have finished out there if it wasn't for the problems with the camera shutting down in the high heat conditions and so forth. So let's count our blessings. We're here in the studio. There's air conditioning on. It's more comfortable to work, and we'll get right back into it in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. We took a break. Again, breaks are great to to uh, to, to have um, when you're working through your watercolors. You want to make sure you actually um, give yourself a rest step back from your painting, look at it. Breaks accomplish a lot of things. One, they give you a rest. So if you work 15, 20 minutes, you take a break, you'll feel better. If you take another, you know, take 10, 15 minutes and then come back. And then what happens too, when you take a break, actually, you, you won't, it'll be subtle, but when you start to wrap up and say, I'm going to take a break, then you start to step back and stop working and you look at your painting and you start to look at things and you see things a little differently than when you're actually in the mode of painting. And the same thing actually happens when you're coming back from a break and you've taken your 15 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes, and you walk back up to your paper and you start looking at it before you start painting, you're actually going to start seeing different things too. And then you can make some, you know, judgment calls and say, oh, I think this is almost, you know, finished. Uh, I'm going to probably just do a little more on this and that. And then, you know, so you'll, you'll strategize a little more actually, and you'll plan a little more 
And you'll see things in a different way when you're taking breaks. Whereas I, I know myself personally, when I used to work um, years ago and I didn't take breaks, I would just keep going and going and going. And, I, and usually what would happen is I wouldn't really be stepping back and kind of strategizing and game planning. So I really feel it's real, really good if you, if you take those breaks. Um, and when you're doing that, you're going to be um, looking at your painting in a different way. Uh, and then gaining more insights into what actually um, is going to be kind of better as you keep working on your painting. And um, so let's keep working now. We came back from our break and I'm noticing what I wanted to do was I want to make um, a green, bluish green background. We were in the um, backyard. There was bushes, dark green, evergreen bushes behind behind this scene. So I want to capture that. But I don't necessarily have to stick to that game plan of just blocking out this whole background here with completely dark uh, green, which was the color that was actually back there. Maybe I'll go with a different kind of idea. Maybe I'll go with a more abstracty dark green, middle greens, some light greens, maybe some speckles of light, some white paper I can leave. So let's start working on the background here and with the idea of putting in some good darks, dark greens, but not maybe getting carried away and just blocking in the whole thing with all dark green, even though that's what was there. So um, what I'll do is the first thing, we'll, I'll just clean up the palette a little bit, spritz the palette. And it's good just to keep the palette clean. And then I'm going to bump it up to a larger brush. This is a number 12. So this is a number 12 Da Vinci Maestro. And because uh, we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be painting a larger area. So we, we would be better off using a larger brush. So you kind of just adjust your brush. If you're using, or if you're doing small flower shapes, you know, you might be using your six, your six brush. And then you can notice that if, if you want to do the background here, which is larger, you, you'll, you want to bump up to a larger brush. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bump up to this larger size brush. And we'll go in, we'll get our green washes started. Um, sap green. I'll put a little French ultramarine blue up here. And uh, I'll rinse off my brush, dry it off on some tissue. So this way we don't keep flooding water into our palette. We want to make sure we keep our paints moist and uh, if we don't shake off our brush or dry off our brush a little bit when we rinse it off and we keep going back in it's going to flood the uh, palette out with water so we don't want that we want to keep the paints uh, a little bit you know straight out of the tube feel to them so um, definitely want to go with some Cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium yellow. And some orange and red over here just in case we want to charge in some uh, warmer colors. Burnt sienna. I think I'd like to start here along the table. So I'm just putting down a, some wash along the table here. Maybe some yellow ochre. And I'll pick up some of this wash with some water that I picked up in the bucket and just splash a little bit. And I just do a little moving the brush around. And then we can charge in some color. Now's a good time to add a little bit of wash in that vase. A little bit, I wouldn't add too much. And then we can go back in again. Sap green, French ultramarine blue.
and I'm going to make some shapes. And you can see I'm mixing the greens all throughout. Some splashing. I'll just paint back here a little bit. I don't think I'm going to probably crop this painting a little bit, but I'll just put some wash back there. So I'll just adding some cerulean blue. What I think I'm trying to do here is really trying to uh, mix the colors up and get a good blend of blues and greens. And And this is what's good about the uh, big, the larger brush. It can really cover a lot of ground. And I'll go over the bird a little bit with the green, just to kind of blend it together. French ultramarine blue and green and just maybe a a feeling that we can see through the the vase a little bit And I just work out toward the. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, probably crop this down. Something like this. So I, I would really be kind of cropping the painting down like this, but I'll still paint all the way out to the edge of the paper. I'd rather kind of, just you know, use the whole paper and and. But I have the idea in mind like of trimming it down a little bit and shrinking it in this way, maybe making it more of a square painting. And then we can do a little... This just uh, adds a little bit of excitement toward the side of the painting with a little bit of splashing. Again, more variety in the painting is better. <clears throat> that. A little more splashing back here. And that should be good. And what's good about this is when we put in this dark background,
um, we, we got more of a feeling of light on our tablecloth. So we did have a really bright sunlit day out here when we did this painting. And that's why I'm sort of adding a little more light to the painting with the tissue, blotting up a touch of paint to give that feeling of maybe some light bouncing around. And uh, we can uh, add a little bit of wash to the tablecloth here and there. So I'm going to use a little bit of that blue. Adding a touch of very light wash, tonal value, a little, very little bit of light tonal value on the tablecloth here and there. But definitely leaving mostly white paper, you can definitely enhance the feeling of light. And I think we've uh, captured that feeling of light. We can get a little bit of shadow. Um, I'll use uh, raw, uh, burnt sienna and some uh, French ultramarine blue, touch of purple, and we're just going to have a little shadowing for the shorebird. And we'll add a little more shadow in here, back this way. Shadow should be very haphazard. Um, we don't want to make shadows too perfect. Uh, they don't really, usually they're kind of mysterious looking shadows. So that's what we're going to do. Some mysterious looking shadows. There we go. Same thing for the shorebird shadow, just some mysterious looking shadow along the like that. Okay, I think that looks good. And then maybe just a some burnt umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of green. And we'll use our um, needlepoint brush here, and we'll just sort of put a couple of interesting uh, twigs, and uh, that's going to really probably best to do these um, these fine. These fine bits of uh, ornamentation um, once the paper 100% dries, but but we'll do it now. I'm going to do it now, but you can. I can see some of it is starting to. But that looks good. It gives it more interest there with the with some of the uh, some of the um, finer uh, twigs and uh, stems and things in the flower arrangement. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm I'm glad you joined along f with us on this painting. We're going to zoom in a little bit. We'll take the tape off, so I'll remove the palette here, and we'll uh, remove the tape. And this was just a real fun composition. We weren't really setting out to paint a gallery painting here. We're just having fun. We went outside. We were getting some of that beautiful sunshine, fresh air, outdoors. You can go outside and paint. I wanted to capture that feel of being outdoors, plain air painting. 
obviously you won't need to set up a camera and all that kind of a thing where you're sort of I had a little bit of the struggle with my camera shutting off on me but I want you you know I want everyone to get out once in a while and do some plein air painting do some compositions you're not going to set out to do a finished beautiful painting you're going to just go out and capture some real fun painting outdoors and fresh air and having a good time and that's what I did here you can see I wasn't looking to make a perfect painting here and I'll zoom in okay perfect we're gonna see you on the next video again try out some plain air painting you're gonna love it going outdoors sitting in a chair you can work on your lap with a, a sketchbook, you know, and a, maybe just an apron on or maybe a towel over your lap with a, with a sketchbook. Your paint's on a little table next to you, maybe a little stack tray or a box or something. Uh, be creative, be inventive, and uh, give a little bit of a, a try going outdoors and painting a little bit. Maybe just, you know, in your local area or in your just in, even in your yard. And I paint in my backyard quite a bit, and I'm hoping you'll try it too, okay? All right, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.